Hello, this is Arpo Sword, and today we are going to be talking about yet more ways to artificially create a sword with an inflated value. Today we're going to be focusing specifically on Woot or Crucible Steel, and where you can emulate the pattern. There are many different methods you can use to imitate the pattern of Woot. However, the obvious starting place is to look at real Woot. What you see before you now is an example from my collection of Kara Karason or Black Woot from Karason. It has a distinctive pattern of white flecks on a dark grey or black background depending on how deeply it's etched. And you can see that none of the flecks are particularly long and none of them make particularly large curving deviations. It is a watered steel pattern. You'll also note that as you grind deeper into it that pattern changes because it's not consistent throughout the billet. It is rather randomized. As a result of this randomization, there's no extremely prominent patterns in it, no evident folding or anything like that. However, that's not to say that such a thing does not exist. You can see in the example here that forging manipulations and grinding manipulations have been used to put circles of higher density patterning on a Woods billet. However, you will note that these are not forged in with a different sort of steel. They're simply exposing the finer grain by grinding deeper and then hammering the whole thing flat. Essentially what they're doing is compressing the grain in that area so it's more prominent before etching it. Now let's look at the first method that I'm going to describe in ways you can visually somewhat emulate woots. One of the more successful methods I've seen is called the Turkish ribbon pattern weld, and it was used, as the name implies, in Turkey. This particular item, also from my collection, comes from a kilage, and it uses small star or cross-shaped pattern welded bars lined up five to seven in a row up along the blade. It's very hard to see under natural light, so let's have a look at it under a flash. With the extremely bright flash, you can see that this is, in fact, several rows, or rather bars, that have been made to have a crossed appearance in them. When we look at it in a rather more expanded view, you can see these bars very clearly. However, you need to etch for a really long time to tell the difference between those bars, which most of the swords back in the day wouldn't have been etched to that level, especially not if you wanted to sell one for a fraudulent reason back in the day. This is not a modern recreation. This is a historic way that they emulated the style of woods by using simple pattern welding or as simple as pattern welding can be. I will note that this is not actually a bad sort of steel to use for a sword. If they use appropriate steels, this produces a very fine sword. Mine, for example, retains good flexibility and hardness. And it is actually a very appealing thing to look at. However, it's easy to confuse it for woods, especially if you want to see woods. Furthermore, many people have never seen this style of Damascus steel, or rather pattern welded steel, if I may correct myself. And so they will be easily mistaken to think this is in fact a crucible steel, when it is not. The next example we're going to look at is an example of a very subtle etch, much like the one before. However, even under bright light, you can see that this one seems to be fairly light. Much like in our example of actual crucible steel, you'll see that there are white flecks in this. However, the lines are much longer than you would expect to see in actual woods. I've highlighted them in green here, and you can see that they run the entire length of the edge, and there are several large curled ones up in the main body of the sword. If we compare that back to the uh, image without an overlay, you'll note that these are way too long to be formed by natural carbide segregation. These are a lighter but very thin piece of steel that has been pattern welded among the darker steel. I bet if you etch this longer, like in the next image, you'd note that it does have very definite pattern welding. So the actual limited pattern welding makes it seem more like Woots than it otherwise would, a rather clever way to do it. Our next sword comes from an eBay seller, who, credit where credit is due, did not claim this was Woots. Very diligently they said that this was merely an impression of crucible steel, and it was not actually made of crucible steel. This is the first example of a section of swords that don't use any pattern welding, but still try to achieve a similar look. It is done via either stencils or some sort of chemical resist, like a lacquer or a paint, and a strong etchant, like acid. 
As a result, you'll see that there are many bright lines on a dark background. However, you can see that there is a difference in height. The bright lines are taller than the dark areas, which tells us that the dark area has been etched in, while the bright white lines have been left completely untouched. You'll also note that many of these form a branching structure because of the way the resist was painted on. I recognise that it might not be easy to tell that that's what's happening here, but I guarantee you this is not Woots. This is merely made to look like Woots. It's perhaps best visible in this image, where on an angle you can see a whole stream of them up near the hook, while they're not present at all on the spine. The question being, if it is made of Woots, why isn't the pattern everywhere? It's only on the flats and the areas that they know people would look, because it is, of course, fraudulently made this way. However, I will note this was fraudulently made in the year 1900. It's not a modern reproduction. It is a period reproduction. Another period reproduction comes from Matt of Scholar Gladiatoria, and he's got a flank officer's sword here, rather in the style of the 1803 um, influence, and it has what appears to be pattern welding or Woods patterns. However, this is once again simply an etched pattern, achieved solely by using a chemical resist and some sort of strong etchant like acid. Most visible in the bottom left quadrant of this image where you can see the darker areas, these are simply long lines that have been painted on prior to etching and then brushed off. The effect looks a lot like pattern welding, however it was done by someone who didn't know how to pattern weld and simply wanted to increase the value of their product. That's all I have to look at today. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to my channel, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the description below. This has been Ipo Swords. Till next time, stay sharp.